Hello viewers, welcome once again to Elimu TV, which is your station where you watch and learn. I'm your tutor, Mr. Mangi Francis, taking you through electrolysis. We are going to start with electrolysis 1, which is binary electrolysis covered in form 2, which basically looks at the effect of heat, uh, effect of electric current on substances. Stay tuned and do pay attention throughout the lesson. So what are the goals of this lesson? By the end of this lesson, you'll be able to achieve the following goals. That is, we'll be able to identify conductors and non-conductors. We'll be able to define terms like a conductor, non-conductor, electrolyte, and non-electrolytes. And maybe we'll be able to look at what is electrolysis and the products of electrolysis. So what are conductors? These are substances that allow electric current to flow through them. They may allow heat, but the reason as to why these conductors allow electric current to flow is because they contain delocalized electrons. Now the delocalized electrons in these substances are flow throughout the conductor and the flow of electrons throughout the conductor is what we basically refer to as current. So current is the flow of electrons which are charges. Uh, we also have non-conductors. So what are non-conductors? These are substances that allow, do not allow electric current to flow through them. So they do not have uh, electrons. So basically they are used as insulators. They do not allow current to pass through them. So what are electrolytes? For us to be able to understand this, it is very important for us to look at the following illustration. So we have a, a tripod stand uh, containing, uh, or we place a beaker, which contains an ionic substance in it. So when we uh, connect this ionic substance in solid state through uh, electrodes, and the electrodes are connected to an external circuit, uh, even if the switch is switched, uh, is crossed, you may observe that uh, uh, the bulb does not write. This is because uh, there is no flow of electrons, basically because ionic compounds have uh, complete transfer of valency electrons from one atom to the other, therefore leading to no electrons at all. But if we add heat, that is we heat the ionic compound using a Bunsen burner, uh, the, uh, and we connect this to an external circuit, once we heat the uh, ionic compound, uh, the ions become mobile and they move throughout the substance. They may migrate from one point to another. And this leads to, or this makes the bulb to light. So you'll, be ob you'll observe that the bulb lights in that case. So what conclusion or what uh, can we draw out from this observation? So ionic compounds do not conduct electric current in solid state. But on heating an ionic compound, this makes the mobiles, uh, the ion mobile, hence they move. Uh, positively charged ions, they migrate to the uh, negative terminal, which we basically refer to as the cathode, while the negatively charged ions migrate to the, uh, or towards the positive terminal, which we refer to as the anode. So when this happens, the ions, uh, after migrating to the uh, terminals, uh, the, the, the anode and the cathode, well, we have the, uh, the, uh, the, the anode attracting negatively charged ions. Uh, the illustration here, we may use a Q to stand for an ion, which basically is oxidized to uh, a gas, and uh, there is a release of two electrons, according to this uh, illustration. This may vary, or this may change due to the, uh, the variancy of the anion. At the same time, uh, cathode, which is the negative terminal, may attract uh, the positively charged ion. And in this illustration, may, we may use a cation, for instance, P, which does not uh, uh, stand for any element. 
it gains two electrons and it is reduced to p atom or p metal and this makes uh, the solution to decompose uh, what about electrolysis of sodium chloride so when we perform uh, electrolysis on sodium chloride what are the products that we form so to begin with it's very important for us to identify the ions uh, formed first in sodium chloride we have uh, sodium ions and chloride ions so uh, then we identify the anode and the cathode in our structure when these uh, when we identify the two terminals then the anions and the cation will migrate respectively so the sodium ions which are positively charged migrate to the cathode while the chloride ions negatively charged migrate to the anode so what happens after they migrate uh, chloride ions are oxidized to chlorine gas and two electrons are produced at the same time uh, sodium ions migrate to the cathode and they are re or they are oxidized or that is cathode reduction takes place they are reduced to sodium atoms so what observation do we make chlorine gas is produced at the anode which is a green yellow gas and sodium metal is deposited at the cathode which is silvery shiny so what precaution should we look at when performing this experiment? Uh, chlorine gas is poisonous and therefore the gas should be performed in a film chamber since the gas is poisonous. So which are the key terms to recall when it comes to electrolysis? We have an electrolyte which we basically refer to as a solution or an ionic compound in molten state that allows current to pass through. Term number two, we have electrode. These are conductors which have been dipped in an electrolyte. Basically, it's to allow the contact between ions and electrons to flow through uh, the electrolyte. We also have electrolysis now, which is the process uh, that allows uh, the process through which current is passed through an electrolyte, and uh, the electrolyte gets decomposed. Uh, we should note the following. Ionic compounds do not conduct current in salt state, but conduct in uh, the presence of mobile ions, that is in molten state. So did we get a concept of this lesson? Uh, we can do that by trying to answer the following question. Uh, distinguish between an electrolyte and, and, uh, and non-electrolyte. We can as well as define the term e electrolysis and uh, you can try to state the products formed at the anode and cathode when electrolysis of red 2 bromide is conducted uh, you can refer this in students uh, chemistry student book 2 or patel but you can as well as contact us through our sms line number which is on your screen you can as well as visit us at youtube or in our facebook page at erimu tv or you can send us a tweet at elimutv underscore ke. I'm your tutor once again, Mr. Mangi Francis. Do pay attention for more lessons to come. Thank you. Have a nice time.